Sorry, go back. I'm not sorry. Oh yeah, that's why I brought this. That's my ride. What'd she say? Time travel commences yes, if you take your, If you take your mask off during a picture on a ride, this you will not get your Listen picture up. and you have a, a chance of getting taken out of the park. Let's roll. just got off Dino and here is one of the most finally extinct rides from evil world is now extinct completely it is no longer on any of the maps here on the paper maps and it is no longer on the my Disney experience app so it is gone um, if you ask any cast members, they will just say that it is completely, it is done forever. So, that is that. So, we are going to, I think we're going to Everest. <coughs> oh, I was, I was choking on my water before. So, I, I'm trying to clear my throat and it's, it's killing me. So, but let's head over to Everest. I would find a way. Oh, we're gonna 
it again after we're done? Yep. Let's do that again! Yeah, he's just sitting there like, I he know you're looking at me. He's like, Shh, I'm not going to hurry up for I'm you. Gonna, I'm just going to get a suntan. I'm good. He's I'm like, I'm jump. just going to eat the bug that was on my foot. In the, jungle, the, mighty jungle. the other one was right over there. Uh, and he just like walked away. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> he's like, what? He's <laughs> like, you're not my family members. Ooh, oh, there he goes. He's like, he's, he's like, I'm out of here. He's, he's like, goodbye. Like Thank you. It's for my show. It's, uh, it's for my show. I'm the Irish Mad Hatter on my uh, show called The Root of All Disney. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to start selling this mask. Or a, or a, or a similar design, because... This one was airbrushed, but I can make a similar design. So, that I will do. Hello! First, you must sit. You must sit down on the Z-Ride. And you must wear shoes. Why are you wearing why are you wearing the poncho? Why? Number nine. Call them. Hello. 
We're following them. Hello? Those two? That's mine. Oh wait, no, you're just right here. Wow, we just made that. Yeah, on the other one we were allowed to. That's gonna get completely soaked. Okay. Mine's got the electronics. <laughs> I hope it lasts. We don't spin it. Okay, we will do that. Will you do that? Well, we're about to get soaked anyway, so... It's just a nice little river ride. I doubt you get that wet. I remember getting that wet on this the last time. No, it's a great, it's a great shot. I think this is the first time I'm getting this show, uh, this ride for my show. I got a little wet. I didn't. She gets soaked towards the very, very end. No, we're going. No, we're not. Maybe we are. Oh! Yay! That felt so good. Wow! Oh my God, that felt wonderful. That felt so good. Oh boy. That felt wonderful. That felt good, yes. I think my bag got more soaked than anything. <laughs> That's why I'm glad I brought a double bag today.
Oh, if we were at the Universal one, I would not bring a bag on this. I mean, you get kind of wet, you don't get a lot. It's always in the sun. What? Wait, that was it? Yeah. They turned off all the other stuff? I mean, we got a little wet, so. Yep. to see you here. Welcome to the Caravan Stage. You know, over the past 20 years or so, the stage has seen some incredible things. People gain an appreciation for wildlife, uh, get over their fear of birds, and even recently, that adventure with the gang from Up. But you know, then that whole 2020 thing happened, right? So it's been just us and the birds for the past couple months, and we are very excited to see all of you back here so we can share all these birds with all of you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Now, I'm just one of a whole team of animal behavior specialists, and today we're quite fortunate because I'm gonna be joined by my good friend, Adam. Hey, thanks, Scott. Bye, everyone. Hi. Hey. We are so glad that all of you are here. Let me tell you, this place is not only home to so many birds, but it's become a home for all of us, right? And our favorite part of every day is this. We get to share these beautiful birds with all of you guys. 
Like those guys. Spoonbills. Yeah, now these guys are rosy at spoonbills, and they get their name from the shape of the beak on their face. And that's used to kind of go through waterways and mud and find different food items like crustaceans and krill. And that's actually how they get that pinkish coloration from the different proteins that come from those foods. Oh, right back. Yeah, yeah, they get spoons on their face, Scott. What else do you want? <laughs> how cool is that? Well, you know, those spoons make great adaptations to those birds to survive in the wild. And all birds are really well equipped to survive in different ways. So some birds have modified beaks. Others are going to be great at flying around, like this guy back here. He's called a uh, trumpeter hornbill. His name is Miles. And these birds, if you look at their body shape, very specifically designed for agile flight. They have relatively short wings compared to their body, really long tail, so they're great at maneuvering around through things like the forest. It's great. You know, that's really cool to explain to everybody, but maybe, maybe we can show them. Show them how. <laughs> like, create some hoops. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I need two volunteers from the same party who might want to help demonstrate this guy. Right here in the gray and the pink, stand up and sit right where you are, and then we're going to create some hoops with our arms just like this. Hey, uh, hey Scott. Boop, there it is. <laughs> you, you did that. <laughs> okay, so Miles is all the way in the back there. We'll see if he wants to fly up to the front. There's some of that great fun. And now we'll see if he'll fly all the way to the back to Corey there through that special hoop that we have created. It's okay. Some of you guys are going to get a really close look in just a second as to how well this bird can maneuver. So what do you say, Miles? It's that direction. There we go. You're getting closer. How cool is that? You can keep going if you want. You were gifted with the ability to fly, but why use it? Well, it's actually kind of a cool thing, because he has tiny little feet that help him. Oh, look at that. Our you guys are helping him. I love that. Thank you so much, guys. we got a living forest. They're, like, they're animal behavior specialists, too. Look at that. I always think about the antecedents arranged for everybody. He's like, actually, I think this would be a little more clear. Or uh, maybe he just wants to watch the show himself. Here we go. Oh, man, that was great. Do you guys want to see it go fly back this direction? I mean, the hopping's pretty cute. I'm not going to lie. You guys want to try it one more time? Okay, we're going to see if he'll fly up there. Perfect. We're going to see if he'll fly through the hoop this time. What do you say, Miles? I think you can fly through it, just size it up. And if you do, watch his wing beat as he flies through. Because hopefully he'll tuck those wings in at the last second, and you'll have an opportunity to see exactly how well he can fly through a tight space like in the forest. What do you say, Miles? You want to go this way? Remember me? We work together? He's hanging out with Corey. He's hanging out with Corey. Corey's, Corey's a pretty cool guy. guy. <laughs> Miles, what do you say? The show's only so many minutes long. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna use all of them, okay? Yeah, apparently it's the Miles show, and that's okay, because look at that! Woo! Great job! Another round of applause for our volunteers! Woo! So the other reason these birds fly around so well is because they have to avoid predators, but they also have to catch different types of food items, like flying insects. Right, that's why I created this new invention that's gonna help show off everything that I didn't talk to you about, but can we do it? Um, I guess just wear a mask. Thanks, I was gonna do it anyways. Eric, you're awesome, my friend. So, hey, I am so excited to share this, but I'm gonna need some help. But first, let me reveal this invention. Check this out. Hey, we know what it is? A rocket launcher? It's not a soft rocket. That's a good guess. It's a great launcher! Use your imagination, Scott. But I need somebody who wants to help show it off. But right here in the back, do you wanna come on down? Let's give a round of applause for Elvin else. Okay, so. Here's what we're gonna do. Scott and I, we're gonna count down from three. We're gonna give you the launch countdown. And then what we do, you're gonna stomp on that yellow rectangle on our launch pad, and we're gonna fire a flying insect all the way into outer space. Right. Except it's not a flying insect, it's just a grape, because that would be kind of gross. Okay, so I think we're ready, Scott. Alrighty, well, Miles is actually opening up a solar panel for a second. I don't know if you noticed, he's actually getting some nice sun out here. Feels really nice, doesn't it, buddy? What do you say? But first of all, can we just appreciate how cool that is? How awesome is that with him sitting with his wings out like that? Yeah, it's actually one of the ways they can bake off any bugs that might try to crawl, crawl onto those feathers. So it also makes them look like a pancake. <laughs> That's true. But it is really cool because it allows them to activate certain vitamins and minerals that normally they wouldn't be able to use unless they have sunlight, just like us. Very true, but you know, Miles is seeming pretty comfortable up here. I'm not sure <laughs> if he wants to participate. Hey buddy, I have some of your favorite treats like grapes here. What do you think about those? 
My cooking's not good enough for you today. I understand. That's cool. So the neat thing about a free flight show is that birds can pretty much do whatever they want to do, right? Oh, and he's exercising that right. <laughs> he definitely is. This is what no looks like in the bird world. And it's okay. It's a great opportunity for you guys to learn a little bit more about how we're training all these different birds here. We train using positive reinforcement, which works out really, really well. Most of the time. <laughs> oh, but this is actually really good. When he lowers his head down like that, you get a great view of that cask on top of his head. And so what that does, it helps him to resonate sound throughout that cask and help the vocalization. So let's see if maybe we can get Miles to come over this way. Maybe not. So I think Miles might be done. Hey, Adam, you have a pretty good relationship with this guy. You want to try to come up here? Yeah, I think? sure. I'm yeah, not sure he's going to go for the stomp rocket, but we can try it. We'll jump up to your hand. Yeah. How about that, buddy? I'm going to need a treat from you. Thank you very much. Hi, friend. Do you want this? Okay. See? All about okay. relationships with the animals. Different what people are going to always have different relationships. And let's see if this relationship outcompetes with the sun. All right, my friend. You Adam, you were such a bright spot on a sunny day. Oh, goodness. That happens. That happens. Okay. okay. Are you ready for launch? All right, let's okay. try it out. On three, two, one. <laughs> that was amazing. You did a great job. <laughs> That went about as well as my inventions normally do. I'm gonna go with you probably was not gonna catch that great. Okay, you did a great job. Thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> man, we had a great show planned for you, I promise. <laughs> no, Miles is a great, great bird. Job. He's doing a great job out here. But yeah, Miles, you go ahead and size. I think you've done everything you could possibly do. Left the light. See you later. That's Miles, our trumpeter hornbill. I told you we should have changed the batteries in it before the show, the show started. <laughs> Probably. But you know, there are a lot of different types of hornbill species. I'm going to cross my fingers and you guys want to see another hornbill species? Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, uh, the, the launcher didn't work so well, but maybe we'll get the hoops going with this guy again. Uh, yeah, stand back up. Let's create the hoops and arms. We've got another hornbill coming out. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure the hoops are the best of ideas. But it's going to be the greatest idea. <laughs> no, no, no. See, there are different types of hornbill species, and this is stuck. Oh my! Um, oh my this is the bird we're going to show them, though. Right, another hornbill. We're going to need a bigger hoop. <laughs> uh, two more volunteers. No, we don't need any more volunteers, but this is a good bird to talk about. He's, his name is Sebastian. He's a southern ground hornbill. And so like he's showing you, they spend a lot of time on the ground. But these birds are also really great at flying. Check this out. Oh my god. Whoa, you don't get to see southern ground hornbills flying very often, so that's a great sight to see. And on top of that, you get to see those white wing tips on the tips of those wings. That's really cool. unique. Now, when we think about adaptations, when we think about this bird, look at that beak. It's very well equipped to help them thrive in the wild. They can use it to forage through the ground and find bugs. They can even use it to go through the top of a tortoise shell. That's darling. But they can also catch snakes too, right? And not just any kind of snake, venomous snakes. Sure. And they'll just shake them up, they'll swallow them right back, slurp them like spaghetti, it's disgusting. <laughs> but it's really awesome. What do you think? Do you want to head right around the corner? I know one of your friends is right there. Maybe they want to pop their head out <laughs> and just show you that they're there. I'm seeing a oh, reoccurring theme. <laughs> it's Miss Katie's. Okay, come on, my friend. I know she's got a treat for you. <laughs> we'll say uh, bye bye, little Sebastian. <laughs> and that was Sebastian! Woo! <laughs> oh man, so adaptations of the birds are cool, but when I think about the top of the list, I think about owls, right? So, do you guys want to meet an owl? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so think about this with adaptations at of the owls. Owls have some of the best eyesight at night. They can hear better than almost any animal that's out there in the animal world. And on top of that, they can also fly nearly silent. Run, run, chicken, run. Why are the chicken just across the road? Uh, chickens. Why is the chicken just across the road? Owl. Certain chicken. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I know we love to do the whole natural behavior bird show, but uh, maybe maybe this girl wants to come on over here. You want to get a treat? Sure. And then uh, I'll help her get back home so we can make sure that owl is coming on up. What do you think? Yeah. You know, this little cup right here is a shaker, uh, is what we call it. And what it does is it essentially let her know that, hey, if you come on over here, there are some tasty treats for you. You're so good. Look at you go. Okay, now do you want to run off with the rest of the girls? I'll help walk you there if you want. Okay, let's go. I'll be right back, Scott. Let me just uh, follow this cut off. <laughs> Great. Hey, good luck with that owl. Yeah, good thanks. Uh, we are going to meet an owl, so I'm glad the chicken's headed off. Uh, in fact, the owl we wanted to meet is named Ollie. So Ollie is called a milky eagle owl. Here he is now. 
And this is one of the largest owl species in the entire world. Now, the really neat thing is, you guys are spaced out in such a way that I bet we're going to get a really great view of him as he flies. These birds can maneuver around a lot of different objects as well. So pay close attention, have your cameras out ready to go. This is going to be a pretty special moment. So what do you say, Ollie? You want to show off? Whoa! What a great flyer! And as you probably didn't hear any sound there, that's one of the reasons they're so good at hunting for their food. They're ambush hunters. They use that nearly silent flight to sneak up on their food items. And it works out really well in this case. Hey, Ollie, you're doing a great job, buddy. What do you say? You are a great little flyer. And you can hear that little vocalization as well. Pretty cute there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Ollie, you're doing a great job out here today, buddy, showing off that silent flight. What most people don't realize, though, is these birds can actually hear really well, too. Some of the best hearing in the animal kingdom. They can hear a mouse and up to a foot of snow. Oh, no. Well, we'll let him head off. And that was Ollie, our milky eagle owl. Woo! I missed the whole owl? Yeah, you just missed the tail end. Ha! Ah. He really did that. Did you at least tell them all the really cool stuff about owls? <laughs> I told them a lot. Oh, but you know, I forgot to mention, an owl the size of Ollie there could eat over a thousand mice or rats in a single year. Right. Yeah, you know, a thousand rats, that's a lot. That was about how many were here not that long ago. Right? Yeah, absolutely. We had a really bad infestation for a while, and there were rats up and down the way. They remember. Yeah, 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 it was pretty bad for a while, they're not going to lie. But luckily, you know what happened? Owls came in, and the rats went away. Right, so don't even worry about it. That rat problem, it's behind us now. <laughs> but uh, rats are pretty smart, right? They're incredibly smart, but they're also plenty of smart birds, too. <laughs> there are a lot of smart birds. And, uh, you know, something maybe we could bring out one of my favorites. This guy right here, Dixon. Ah, uh, collared raven. Do you mind if I tell these guys a little bit more about behavior? Yeah, yeah. Please do. Okay, so you might have noticed us giving those treats to the birds throughout the show. Well, what we were doing is positive reinforcement. They get a treat for doing certain behaviors, and then that makes those behaviors, well, more likely to be repeated, because they start thinking, if I do this one thing, I get tasty treats, I'm going to probably do what gets those tasty treats more often. It's just in a way of yes. saying, <laughs> Why, why, why are you giving him a treat for untying my shoe? Because that was awesome. <laughs> gotcha. Well, you got to watch out when you're giving those treats because, you know, they do remember that. So in that case, if you were untying my shoe and then he gets a treat, <laughs> he might do it again. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> I, know, I get it. I'll, you know what? We'll see if he wants to head out. We'll see if he wants to head out. I appreciate that. So, yeah, you have to watch out or else you might train the behaviors you might not necessarily want to see, right? Oh, I want to see that again and again. I want to see that again and again. <laughs> but I tell you what, I am going to go ahead and tie this back up. Oh, no, he's back. I'm going to my shoes. Hey, uh, whoa, that's not a shoelace. That, he, he broke my microphone. <laughs> Somebody give him a treat, please. <laughs> that was awesome. Wait, I, I, wait, I've never been out here by myself before. Improvise. Hi, guys. Uh, you know, actually, that's a great idea. Do you want to meet a parent? Yeah. You guys want to meet a parent? Okay, I got to check backstage and make sure somebody can bring me one. Give me, like, one second. Hey, hey guys, do um, you think maybe you could bring out Groucho? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, I think I heard somebody say, well, sure. So, um, maybe the, uh, another parent will come out and join us here in just a moment. But uh, first, I got to put my Scott hat on. You see, uh, parrots are capable of really cool adaptations that allow them to do some really neat stuff called mimicking. Thanks, Katie. This is Katie. She's pretty awesome. You met her earlier. Now, but this guy here, this is Groucho. And Groucho is a really cool type of parrot called a yellow naked Amazon. And first of all, will you say hello? Hello. How cool is that, right? Now, you see, parrots out in the wild, they start to mimic the sound of the other parrots they live with. And it's actually a really neat survival skill, but when they grow up with people, they can make other noises too, like talking. So, let's see if he'll show it off. He's one of the best I've ever seen. seven of them. Do you want to hear another one? Yes. Okay, we can do another one, I think, before Scott comes back, but first, they've been pretty awesome, so why don't you give them a kiss? Oh, 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 oh. 
Yeah, good stuff, that kiss. You're awesome, my friend. Okay, you can pick any of your other six songs, whatever you'd like to sing for all of our new friends. How about an encore? Check, check, one, two, check. Hey, Adam, I got a new microphone. That's great news. Yeah. And, oh, you brought out Groucho. Yeah, Katie was like, Adam, you have to bring Groucho out. And then they pressured me. And then it was, yeah. Great. Right. Well, I want to let you guys know that Groucho is one in a million. Most parents never even learn to say a single word. But I'm sure Adam would agree with me that they're also really challenging in your home, too, right? Right. I mean, they fight really hard. Oh, yeah. Really, really hard. Scream really loud? Very loud. And they could live 50 or 60 years. Yeah, that's a really long time. Absolutely. No, oh, but hey, check out the guinea fowl. <laughs> wow, they're pretty fast, huh? <laughs> But you know, that that wasn't supposed to happen right now. Let me figure out what's going on um, with why I forgot. Oh, uh, it's probably because of this guy right here, right? Oh, oh he's awesome, though. This guy's awesome. Yeah, he's an animal right? condor. Now, condors like Ozzy are actually the largest members of the vulture family. So, what do you think's on the menu for a vulture? Anything. Yeah, moose, hopefully not. Uh, more like <laughs> more like dead things. I like your response, though. Yeah, so they eat the carcasses of animals that are lying around. Yeah. So what happens is the condor comes oh, along and cleans up that mess, and that stops the spread of disease. Right, so in a way, they're kind of nature's recyclers, aren't they? Oh, that's really well said. And you know, this guy is pretty incredible. When you look at him open up those wings, they're about 10 feet across from wingtip to wingtip, right? Yeah, so you like to say that he has a 10-foot social distancing preference. <laughs> that was incredibly graceful, Ozzy. What do you think? You want a three over here? I want to show my favorite thing about this handsome guy right here, and that is how cute he looks when he runs on the ground. What do you think? The runway's open, handsome. Let's see you later. <laughs> and that was Ozzy! Woo! Ozzy, Ozzy. Oh man, I love that bird. He's pretty cool. Uh, but you know, we have some other really important birds out there too. Beneficial, in fact. Like this guy up here, it's called a crown crane. His name is Fraser. Fraser Crane. Fraser crane. crane. Right, you're still doing that. Hashtag that jokes. Um, but you know what, Adam, this is uh, where you take over, because this guy never flies down. No, 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 this is all you. See? Well, okay, fine. Um, I, I've got the idea, though. Something that might help. Crane. I told you right that. Over there. Okay. Yeah, you see, crown crane, they get their name because of that crest of feathers up on top of their head, right? It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful and golden. So I made this for you. <laughs> Thanks. No, put it on the other. You look good. Doesn't he look great? Woo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Guy Fieri. <laughs> Okay, so grab some treats and let's see if this bird wants to fly right into Flavortown. <laughs> sure. Okay, Frazier, what do you say, buddy? You got that mohawk. <laughs> it works. Hey, you think it was the hat? No. <laughs> you look really good, though. You should keep it. <laughs> well, you know, it's probably more of that treat giving than positive relationships from positive reinforcement, right? Right, yeah. And, you know, repetitions, they do help build confidence, don't they? Frazier, thank you so much for coming by. That was Frazier Crane. You can put it back on. <laughs> no, I'm good, I promise. Uh, but, you know, there are some really important stories to tell with birds as well. And I like to think of this with our next story. It's simple of pride. For the United States of America, the bald eagle. Thank you. Everyone, this is Hope. And not too long ago, bald eagles just like Hope were placed on the endangered species list. Their numbers dropped so low, so quickly, we didn't think they'd be around for future generations to see in the wild. But you know, that's when something amazing happened. People took notice and they took action. They started cleaning up the waterways where bald eagles were fishing, and they stopped using a chemical pesticide called DDT, which is one of the major reasons for their decline. Right, so everyone, just like everybody here, made a huge difference in bringing these birds back from the brink of extinction. Exactly, and the efforts paid off because the numbers of bald eagles rose so high, they were taken off the endangered species list. Now that is a great conservation success story and a true testament that each and every one of us can play a role helping animals just like Hope out there in the wild. Right, it is a great conservation success story and there are many like it, but there are still many animals that need our help out in the wild too. Very, very true. Oh, kind of like this guy here. He's a blue-throated macaw found in Bolivia. That's my now, favorite. Like That's my favorite macaw. Rare. Less than 200 individuals Because the blue and the, and the yellow, they're very and pretty. That's not all bad news, though, Scott. 
We've been working very closely with like the Red McClaws. World Parrot Trust so that we can help reestablish the wild population of these beautiful birds so that one day you might be able to see a sky full of macaws. Oh, like this. This would be incredible to see. And you know, there are so many other birds with their own unique stories to share. Check this out. A harpy oh. eagle with Dan, one of the largest eagle species in the world. A roo here, a knocked hornbill. Or a bald eagle with that. And no matter what it is, go around and appreciate Doki, Doki. nature. Start your own stories and find the animals that you love. On behalf of all of the animal behavior specialists here, and of course our feathered friends, we wish to leave you with this. May your hearts take flight and your spirits soar forever. Namaste. Bye.